the Whitman Tailwind. Wow! Now maybe you know something about these planes, but I didn't until this chance encounter. Now I know a lot more about them and you can too. So check out this video, get a close look at one of the nicest experimental planes I have ever seen, along with a fantastic owner slash caretaker. There is nothing like a nice Saturday flight to join some friends at a local airport display day or fly-in. I was at a recent fly-in and I noticed a plane that was for sale a year ago. I had imagined myself owning this plane and done some research on its unique features, but alas, I already have too many toys. As I checked it out, my attention was drawn to the absolutely gorgeous plane sitting next to it. I really wanted to talk to the owners of each and hear what it was like to own and fly these beauties. Well, I found the owners, and as it turns out, these two planes had the same owner, and he is a great guy. He was gracious enough to allow me to come to his hangar and interview him, so we can all learn more about these incredible planes. In this video, we'll explore the Whitman Tailwind, and we're going to save the Mustang for a later video. My name is Paul, and uh, this is my recently acquired Whitman Tailwind, um, designed by Steve Whitman in 1953, um, who was Steve was a highly respected um, air racer and aircraft designer. And this, in 1953, when this airplane was designed, there was a lot of interest in this airplane and it, it kind of started the whole EAA. People wanted to build this airplane. Steve started scratching out plans on napkins and whatever, and, and people started building these things in their garage. And this particular uh, tailwind was built by a gentleman um, who's still with us. He's 85 years old and he's flying the 13th um, tailwind that he's built. This was number seven, one of his favorite airplanes. And it turns out somebody told me about this airplane that was local here, close to where I'm at now, and it had been sleeping for probably about 10 years. And a friend of mine, Justin, who's a tailwind owner, he flew it down, he got it going and flew it down for me and then I started working on it and trying to bring it back to life. So I've only got about 20 hours in it right now and it's running real good, it's performing good as advertised and I'm just having a lot of fun with it. The Whitman Tailwind, what are some unique characteristics of all Whitman Tailwinds? Well, I think, um, you know, at first glance people, people th say it's a very boxy airplane and it does look very boxy, but Steve, I think was clever enough to, to, to make the, the fuselages kind of an airfoil. And so he's reduced the drag by doing all this stuff and, and kept it very light. It's a very light aircraft. Um, originally, they, it started as a W8 and it had a shorter wing, but then this, this tapered um, extension on the wing was what makes this a W-10, you know, and S Steve was smart. He designed it to where you could lay it out on the floor and tack everything together, weld everything together, make two halves, tack the rear end together and then sp sp spread it open to the right dimension here and keep everything um, trammed up that way. And then, you know, people joke that you can build it with a hacksaw and an oxyacetylene torch and yeah, so originally, I think the original Tailwind, um, Steve Whitman designed around a 90 horse um, Continental. As the story goes, Steve would take his racer around the country and his wife would follow him in a Cessna 140 and, and Steve was disgusted at how, how slow the Cessna was. So he came up with something they could put their luggage in and, and something would scoot along with the racer. And that's, <laughs> They said Jim Clement got so good at building these, and he, he was a personal friend of Steve's too. This one was completed in 2002. And when Jim Clement built this, he built two at the same time. He built one with the nose wheel. That was number eight, this was number seven. So there's, there's a few Clement airplanes out there, and I think most people that end up with one of Jim's airplanes, they, they hold on to them. This was one of Jim's favorite airplanes, but Fred, the second owner, who's now passed away. This airplane was Fred's third tailwind, and he just fell in love with this airplane, and he had to have it. That's what, Jim Clement builds them, and then somebody has to have them, and they buy them from Jim, and Jim can only, you know, he can only fly so many. I feel pretty fortunate to have a Clement, because Jim was a really good welder, very good fabricator. He was a, he was a auto body guy, too, so his attention to detail was real good. 
and I feel really, really comfortable with the airframe. That was, that's the other thing. So Jim Clement, he did, he changed a lot of things where the door, it, it, it used to be a straight post here and Jim decided to kick this back and move the carry through spar back so there was more headroom. Steve Whitman had designed the stick so it's, it comes over your leg. You can just swing it out of the way, get in and bring the stick and rather than having to swing your leg over and that was a pretty clever design. And they put an internal uh, friction device on the stick itself for your trim. And on the aileron trim, it just has a, came up with just a little um, spring that you could move back and forth on the uh, push-pull tubes. And you, so everything's trimmed internally. There's no external trim tabs. So what does yours have for an engine? This is an O360, just a um, normally aspirated. O 360, so 180 horse. And I, I have to give a lot of credit to um, Craig and Nicole Cato. Craig designed this propeller, and he's been making propellers for a long time. It, it pulls real good, and, but you could still slow the airplane down enough to land it. But um, I think Jim Clement, he, he would find an engine and design the airplane around that engine. And he found this 180 horse off of maybe a a wrecked airplane or something, rebuilt it, and then designed this, this airplane around that. What's your useful load? Uh, I would say the useful load was somewhere 13, 1400 pounds, and the, this wow. airplane weighs, let's say, it's, this is a little on the heavy side because of the motor, and so it's close to 800 pounds, maybe a little over, so what's that? You know, the useful loads, let's call it 500 pounds, something okay. like that, so. I try to keep the weight off. <laughs> <laughs>
that's giving me a, just an honest 200. That feels good. The propeller feels real good at 23. So 200 miles an hour at 2300 RPM mm -hmm. at 5,000 feet. Yep. That's, and that's amazing. Yeah, and that's about maybe 22 inches of manifold pressure. Well, you're probably burning eight gallons an hour? Yeah, I would say. Because the, the 180 horse, it's, you'd like to say it's six or seven, but it's not. It's, it's pretty thirsty. Uh, compare and contrast the flying the Whitman to the 182. In comparison, I think the, the most challenging thing to get used to on this airplane is it is so efficient and fast that you gotta learn to slow it down. It, whereas the 182, the envelope on that's pretty benign, you know? It, it's a very honest airplane. It, you, I feel like you, I could land this in somebody's backyard. Not the case with this. You, you need some runway and, and you got to slow it down. It's, it's very docile once you slow it down. And it really likes, once it's down around 100 miles an hour, it, it, it flies very nice right there. It comes across the fence probably about 80. I'm, I'm finding the technique is to because I don't like to, I don't like to come dragging in with power. I just don't like that. So, if you come in kind of high, get it about 100 miles an hour, and then if if you need to to get to your point a little sooner, just slip it. It slips so beautifully. So I've been just slipping it right down to the to the final approach point, and then by then I have all the flaps in, and I tend to three point land it because this, I'm a three point landing guy anyway. But you know, full stall. And wheel landings, this propeller doesn't have, a, it's a pretty long propeller, so there's not a lot of clearance. It tracks, it tracks straight on the ground, it handles across one pretty good. Um, again, I haven't had a lot of wind because I'm, I'm just sneaking up on all of this, but I did launch out of Red Bluff the other day and it was, it was gusting to almost 30. Taxing it crosswind and downwind to take off, it was very, um, very user friendly for as light as it is. Mm -hmm. It almost feels, it almost feels, I'm not gonna, heavy is not the word, but it's, it's, not, it's not super sensitive in the rudder and I like that. It's kind of just, um, it responds the way I like. Um, when you were looking, did you consider a nose wheel or did you know you wanted no, a tail wheel version? I, 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 I knew I wanted a tail wheel. Uh, I'm a tail wheel pilot. You know, I, I like tail wheel airplanes. And I just think they, they look more like an airplane with a tail wheel on them. There's nothing wrong with a nose wheel airplane. I just, I prefer. Oh, tail I can wheel. understand why. It just looks right. It just looks right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. This adventure started with an admiring look of this beautiful plane at a fly in. And now we all know a lot more about Steve Whitman tailwinds and the special modifications Jim Clement made on this one to make it even better. As you can see, Paul is an incredible caretaker for this important piece of experimental aviation history. Be sure to subscribe to this channel as Silva Adventures will continue our tour around Paul's hangar and explore this little hot rod midget Mustang, which of course has a great story to go along with its incredible looks and performance. You don't wanna miss that video. Now, while you're waiting for me to publish the Mustang video, be sure to check out some of my other flying and hiking adventures on this channel and please join me in future Silva Adventures.